Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're learning all about algebraic expressions. Let's get started. All right, before we get to our first example, let's talk a little bit about the vocabulary involved with algebraic expressions. The algebraic part means that we're going to have variables in the expressions. And then because they're expressions means there's going to be no equal sign, right? If it had an equal sign, then we'd be talking about equations. But for today, just algebraic expressions. Now the first uh, word we're going to talk about are terms. And terms are the parts of an expression, an algebraic expression not the operations. Next, well, like terms are terms that have the same variables, but also raised to the same exponents. Uh, if you have an x and a y, those are not like terms because they're not the same variables. If you had an x squared and an x cubed, well, those are the same variables, but they're not raised to the same exponents. So they also would not be like terms, okay? Last word is constant terms or just constants. And constants are also like terms, but they have no variables. They're called constants because no matter what the value of the variables are, they stay constant. They stay the same. Now, let's get into our first example. Okay, example one. Identify the terms and the like terms in each expression. So for A, we've got 9x minus 2 plus 7 minus x. So again, this is an algebraic expression because we have uh, variables. Uh, and then first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the terms. Well, to do that, what I want to do first is change this into strictly an addition expression. So whenever I have subtraction, I'm going to change that to addition, adding the opposite. I'm going to rewrite this as 9x. Instead of minus 2, I'm going to say plus a negative 2. Uh, and then plus 7, that's okay. And then instead of minus x, you probably could guess it, plus negative x. So my first step is just to rewrite uh, the expression as an addition expression. Now I'm ready to identify the terms. And again, the terms are the parts of the expression without the operations. So the terms then are 9x, negative 2, 7, and negative x. Those are my terms, my like terms, are where I have uh, the same variables raised to the same exponents or constants. I have a 9x and a negative x. They're both x. It doesn't matter that this is negative. That's okay. The fact is that both of these are raised to the first power, even though we don't write it. There's just one x. Okay, so those are like terms. 9x and negative x. Now I'll put a comma. My other group of like terms are my constants, negative 2 and 7. Negative 2 and 7. Okay, part B, I'm going to do slightly different. Um, I could do the same thing and just change it first to an addition expression again. But I'm going to circle. And this is another strategy that, that a lot of students like to use. Uh, you just circle the parts of the expression. And if you see a negative or a subtraction in this case right now, you include that with whatever's after it. So I'm going to use that strategy here. So I have w squared. Whenever I see a plus, I'm not going to circle that. I have a 5w. I have minus 3w squared. So I'm going to circle, when I see that subtraction, I'm going to include that with what comes after it. And then I'm going to have that w. Now, I want you to see how it's similar to what we did here. If I change this expression to... Uh, in addition expression, this is what I would get. I would get w squared plus 5w. And then remember, subtraction, we would change that to plus a negative 3w squared and then plus w. Again, notice my terms. w squared, w squared. 5w, 5w, negative 3w squared, negative 3w squared, w and w. So a lot of students like to use this. And if that works for you, then great. So let's list our terms. We have w squared, 5w, uh, negative 3w squared, and w. Now let's do our like terms. So again, we're looking, if you notice, they're all w. 
but then we also have to check to make sure they have the same exponents. So I've got a w squared here and a negative 3w squared here. It doesn't matter with this coefficient, that's okay. These are still like terms because they're w squared. Uh, so that's my first w squared and negative 3w squared. And then we've got 5w and w. Again, the coefficient is okay. We're just looking at the same variable. In this case, they're raised to the first power. So 5w and w. Those are my other like terms. Let's look at another example. All right, example two. Simplify 3 fourths y plus 12 minus 1 half y minus 6. Okay. Well, first, I know how to simplify fractions, right? 2 6 would become 1 third. Uh, but what about simplifying algebraic expressions? How do I know when it's in simplest form? When there are no like terms and no parentheses. When you get to that point, then you've simplified it far enough, it's in simplest form. And to get there, we call it combining like terms. So what we just identified, when you see like terms, we can combine them. Um, and use the distributive property when you need to. That's going to help you get rid of the parentheses. So let's try example two. I'm going to change it to an addition expression. So this is going to become 3 fourths y plus 12. That's already addition. This minus is going to be plus a negative 1 half y. And then that minus 6 becomes plus negative 6. And the reason we do that is because now I can change the order. The commutative property of addition means I can change the order around because I have all addition. So I'm going to rewrite it. 3 fourths y, switch this around, plus negative 1 half y, plus 12, and then plus my negative 6. Now we're ready to combine like terms. This would become negative 2 uh, fourths y, that's the same thing. So when I add that with 3 fourths y, that would give me 1 fourth y, plus 12 and negative 6 would become 6. At this point, are there any like terms? No, that's a constant and that has a variable of y. They're not like terms. Are there any parentheses? Nope. Which means this expression here is now in simplest form. Here's some to try on your own. All right, for the last example, simplify this expression. Now again, to get it in simplest form, we're looking for no like terms and no parentheses. And to get there, we combine like terms and use the distributive property when necessary. Whenever you have parentheses, first thing to always look for, and if you want to put a big star next to this, see if you can simplify in the parentheses first. 6n plus 4, I can't, they're not like terms, so that's okay. So now here, hopefully you recognize you're going to use that distributive property. And if you don't remember how to do that, check out this video. But we're going to distribute this negative 1 half to everything inside the parentheses first. So negative 1 half times 6n, negative 1 half times 4. Negative 1 half times 6n plus negative 1 half times 4. And then we still have that plus 2n. Make sure you always show your work going down, nice and organized. Now we just start to simplify. Negative 1 half times 6n, that's going to be negative 3n, plus negative 1 half times 4 is going to be negative 2, and then I still have that 2n. Now here, let's combine like terms. Well, negative 2 is the only constant, so that's going to be off by itself. Negative 3n and 2n are like terms. They're both just n, and they're both just to the first power. Negative 3n plus 2n would be negative 1n, which I'll just write as just negative n, plus negative 2. Lastly, remember, we can't have parentheses. So at this situation, I know it's kind of weird because we, we typically like to have addition. I'm going to change it back to a subtraction problem. So this becomes negative n minus 2. There are no like terms uh, and there's no parentheses anymore. So this is in simplest form. Here's some more to try on your own. As always, thank you so much for watching and if you like this video, please subscribe.